One goal of physics is to provide the basic science for practical devices designed by engineers. I once knew a kid from Tennessee. He didn't speak much, but he made a mean mud pie in the playground. His name is Tim Cook, and he sells apples. What about dim apples? What? Oh, the thing. Yes, so uh, the focus of this chapter is on one extremely common example, the capacitor, a device in which electrical energy can be stored. For example, the batteries in a camera store, energy in the photo flash unit by charging a capacitor. The batteries can supply energy at only a modest rate, too slowly for the photo flash unit to emit a flash of light. I bet Bill Clinton wished he knew that before he went to Epstein's Island. You know, with the photo and all. However, once the capacitor is charged, it can supply energy at a much greater rate when the photo flash unit is triggered, enough energy to allow the unit to emit a burst of bright light. Much like the photo flash from the camera, I used to snap pictures of your mama last night. The physics of capacitors can be generalized to other devices and to any situation involving electric fields. For example, Earth's atmospheric electric field is modeled by meteorologists as being produced by a huge spherical capacitor that partially discharges via lightning. The first step in our discussion of capacitors is to determine how much charge can be stored. This how much is called capacitance. Let's hope you remembered how to integrate, otherwise you'll be like a barrel in a fish. A barrel in fish, I mean, uh, fish build water in a barrel, fish in a barrel, I mean to say, yeah. Uh, 